Ah, oh, look at what we've got. We look at what we've got. Nostril. And it looks amazing. I am so look excited. We've got the other one done. Looks like it turned out. Oh, and what is what is Macy have here? <laughs> Macy has air fried onions. Ooh. To go on top. Mm -hmm. So let's see this. Um, I'm gonna take this off so you guys can hear what I'm saying. All right, so, so the green bean casserole, I will tell you about it a little bit later in the class, uh, how we made it, but uh, these are air fried onions. You guys have uh, seen my class a couple months ago, if you've been watching, we did a class on how to cook veggies and I did a demonstration on the air fryer. And uh, this is two uh, medium onions that we sliced and uh, we dipped it in a non-dairy milk. You can use almond milk or soy milk or whatever. And then we just dropped it in flour. Um, I use a whole grain flour. You can also use a gluten-free flour. Um, any kind of flour you want, just dip it in the flour. And uh, I put a little bit of country style seasoning on it just to give it a little extra flavor. And then we threw it in the air fryer at 350 degrees. There's no oil on these, you guys. Like this is like pretty amazing. Um, we threw in the air fryer at 350 degrees for 25 minutes and uh, we stirred them about every five minutes and uh, look at those like air fried onions. I mean look at these nice and crispy um, and beautiful um, and uh, several of us have sampled them already. They're very good. They taste really good. So uh, we're just going to put them on top of the green bean casserole. And they're all hoping that I have too many onions so they can eat the rest of them. Right? Yes. <laughs> this green bean casserole is amazing, healthy, plant-based, gluten-free, um, oil-free, uh, and tastes great. So. Um, we will let you all watch us sample it. But I just pulled it out of the oven. It was bubbling nicely. We're going to let it cool during the class, and it'll be ready to serve at the end, and you'll get to see what it looks like on the plate. So, what do you think? Does that look like enough onions on there? Yes. Does that look about right, Macy? Mm-hmm. All right. Yummy. Okay. The rest is up for grabs. Who want it? <laughs> you want them? You put some in a bowl for her. All right, so that was our first recipe. Wow, that was easy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Green bean casserole is done. Yeah, okay, easy. now the potatoes are next. Um, these are Yukon Gold potatoes that I used. You can also use russet potatoes. Um, and what did I do that for? I just took my lid away and I needed it. So uh, we peeled them, we cut them, and we boiled them. And they just finished. So we are going to pour the juice out into a measuring cup, the juice, the water, whatever it's called. Um, I'm not frazzled today at all, am I? I'm just nervous because there's video cameras watching me. Okay, you guys, you have to talk to me because um, I can't handle talking to cameras unless you guys comment. So keep your comments coming. Tell me what you think. Teresa Stevens Davis says hello. Hi, Mich Teresa. Michelle said, Yum. Yum. That was a little bit ago, so I'm not sure what you that, said. That, I'm hoping that was the green bean casserole, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm saving my water, and now I have my potatoes, and I need a pot head closer. I'll just use this one. Uh, we are going to mash the potatoes without any water or anything in it. Um, when you are working with uh, uh, cashew cream, which is, or nut cream, or anything like that, a plant-based cream, as your cream for your mashed potatoes, you do not want to put the cream in and then mash it, because it makes the potatoes turn gooey. Like, really, really, really gooey. So, uh, I mash them with nothing in it, so that they can stay fluffy. So if you want white mashed potatoes, use russet. If you like garlic flavored mashed potatoes, you can put some minced garlic in the water while the potatoes are cooking. They'll have a garlic flavor. 
Um, I just did plain salt in the water while the potatoes were cooking. And you can see how nice and fluffy these potatoes are. I do not like red potatoes for mashed potatoes because they are too moist. Um, Yukon Golds and Russet potatoes are both drier and seem to work better for mashed potatoes. Michelle says yum to green bean casserole and onions. Okay, all right, Michelle, thank you. And we have a hi from Florida for his glory. Hi, welcome. So glad you can join us. Okay, I've got this nicely mashed now and it's got nothing in it. So I'm gonna put some of this potato water in next uh, to moisten it up. I'm not gonna put all the water by any means, but we're gonna put some of it. This was five pounds of potatoes, so it was one five pound bag. And uh, I put in just about a teaspoon or two of salt in the water while it was cooking. I've got about a cup of water in there. No, I've got about two cups of water in there now. Every potato is drier or moister, so you're gonna have to adjust the water based on your potato. Russet potatoes take more than Yukon Gold sometimes, but sometimes it's the other way around. Um, and every batch of potatoes is different too. So I'm getting more of the, the moist consistency that I like. You can see it's sticking a little bit better now. So I'm going to go ahead and add my cream next. And I made a cream in the blender, and to save a little bit of time, we went ahead and blended it, because um, we're gonna have a plenty of other things to blend. Um, so this is a cream that we made out of cashews, water with a little bit of salt and onion powder. Very simple. Um, I've also done the same thing with almonds. It works beautifully with almonds. Um, and if you're allergic to nuts, uh, you can do sunflower seeds. Um, it has a little bit of a different flavor, but it still tastes good. So um, whatever, but that saves you from having to put any kind of oil in, or margin or anything like that in there. So we're gonna add this cream. And I think I've got a spatula here, which will come in handy to get it out. We're just going to whip this up together. And once I add the cream, I try not to over mix. Because like I said, it will get yummy. But you want it well mixed in. If you have an electric mixer and the hand beater, you can use that too. Um, that gets it nice and creamy as well. But um, I'm old fashioned. I just like the hand, hand mixed. Sarah Williams says, I'm so glad I'm watching you do the mashed potatoes. I know what I'm doing for Christmas dinner now. All right, I'm so happy. And Sarah, it's good to hear from you. It's been a long time. Sarah knew me when I was a little girl. <laughs> I remember when she and her sisters used to babysit me. potatoes are done. So we're going to put them in a dish and they are ready to serve. I don't know if they'll all fit in here or not, but hopefully most of them will. Maybe I should put them on this side since this is our finished product side over here. I want you to see how beautiful these mashed potatoes are. Look how fluffy that is. And if you want the recipe for the cream, I don't remember if I actually said the measurements, but um, I did, uh, you can do a half a cup of nuts or one cup of nuts, depending on how creamy you want it. Um, and then the same amount of water as nuts. So like one cup of water, one cup of nuts, um, and a teaspoon of salt, and a couple teaspoons of onion powder. And if you want less nuts, like I said, you can cut it down to half a cup, it'll work fine. It just adds your, your fat. And look, it fit, Macy, it fit. I was a little worried. <laughs> yeah, I was too. I didn't know how it fit, but it did. Well, that's perfect size. I'm gonna give this to you, Macy. 
Somebody? John, can you watch the camera? John, watch the camera. All right. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, thank you. All right. We have good helpers here. Now, to make it look pretty, if I was going to serve it right now, I just like to sprinkle a tiny bit of paprika over the top. Just a very little bit. It's an art to make sure you get it nice and uh, even and not like big clumps. But, uh, and then if you want, you can put a sprig of parsley there. And isn't that a beautiful bowl of mashed potatoes? I'm ready to dig in now. <laughs> so, someone asks, same measurements for the sunflower seeds? Yes, same measurements for sunflower seeds. Yes, and if you like coconut flavor, you can actually use coconut milk as well instead. <laughs> Um, uh, but it will give a coconut flavor to the mashed potatoes. So I prefer that for like mashed sweet potatoes. If you want to do mashed sweet potatoes, um, a, a little bit of coconut milk or coconut cream, that's really good that way as well. So anyway, just another, another idea for your Christmas dinner. Thank you. Okay, John, can I give you a couple more things? Michelle says the potatoes look amazing. Thank you so much. I agree. I think they look very good. They do look good. <laughs> <laughs> The good thing for us is um, we get to try them. No, I'm done with the masher. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Sorry to rub it in for all of our Facebook guys. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you guys could all be here and I could just serve you Christmas dinner. It would be so much fun. Okay, so uh, while we are doing mashed potatoes, we're going to go ahead and do the gravy to go with it because who wants mashed potatoes without gravy, right? Right. Uh, so the gravy, I have two different recipes. And these recipes are on my website, okay? Uh, if you go to my website, uh, christinaskitchen.org, and you click on recipes and you go to, I think it says like sauces, dressings, and gravy or something like that, uh, click in that section and you'll find two gravy recipes. One is called white gravy and the other one is called mushroom gravy. And uh, you can use either one the difference is white gravy has less nuts in it. Especially if you're trying to do lower fat, since you put nuts in the um, mashed potatoes already, I usually do the lower nut one for the gravy to go on top. Um, and uh, once again, you can also use sunflower seeds instead of nuts in this white gravy. Uh, the white gravy, instead of having so many nuts, has brown rice. And that helps thicken it, stretch out the gravy, uh, and you get more of it. Now, the mushroom gravy uh, is what I make if I have no cooked rice on hand. <laughs> I'm in a hurry, I need gravy. Um, I can you can use cashews or almonds or whatever you want. Um, and uh, that's what the mushroom gravy is. Both the white gravy and the mushroom gravy can have mushrooms in it. Uh, so that's the beauty of it. If you don't want mushrooms, you can leave them out. Uh, when we made the green bean casserole, this green bean casserole was made with the mushroom gravy uh, because we wanted it a little more thick, um, but you could also use either gravy for that and it would thicken up beautifully as well. Um, so uh, you can use the white gravy or mushroom gravy in the green bean casserole. Um, with the mushroom gravy, it was the exact amount. We made, we did two pounds of uh, green beans and I steamed them on the stove uh, and I think I steamed them for 12 minutes. They were nice, long green beans. Um, then I threw them in ice water to stop the cooking process and set them aside. And when I was ready to bake the casserole, uh, we made one batch of mushroom gravy, the exact recipe on the website. And we poured the entire batch into the two pounds of green beans. It was the perfect amount. And uh, we baked it in the oven at 350 for about 35 minutes. And of course, depending on your oven, will depend on whether it's done in 25 minutes or 35 or however long it takes, but you just wanna bake it until it bubbles. Um, and I will say this, when you use the mushroom gravy for the green bean casserole, you do not have to cook it on the stove. We put it straight from the blender into the oven, it baked in the oven. So no stirring on the stove necessary. If you use the gravy for mashed potatoes, you have to cook it on the stove. So I just wanna make that clarification. I think with the white gravy, it makes a slightly larger batch. You probably won't use the whole thing in green bean casserole unless you cook more green beans. So that's your recipe for green bean casserole, all right? <laughs> Go to my website and look at the gravy recipe. Um, and uh, 
hopefully a little later I'll have time to actually type up the green bean casserole recipe on our website so you have everything in one place but otherwise you can rewatch this video and take notes <laughs> okay so let's make gravy um, if you have your computers you can look up the white gravy recipe or on your cell phones or whatever otherwise I will holler out the ingredients um, the first ingredient is a half a cup of cashews or almonds or sunflower seeds or whatever you want to use um, this is the fat in the recipe and it's not very much because this actually makes like two and a half quarts of gravy. The next recipe, the next ingredient, excuse me, is two cups of cooked rice or cooked millet. You can use either one. Um, and it's a great way to use up leftover cereal. As you can see, we cook rice, we put it in a jar and we seal it. Um, and it's good all week. And whenever we need rice, we just open it up and we're all ready to go. So I'm looking here for a measuring cup. I see one here. Macy has done an amazing job getting everything out for me today. And I'm very thankful. So we're gonna put two cups of rice in that half a cup of nuts. And this is basically going to help thicken it and stretch out those nuts so the gravy is not as fat, fattening. I mean, even though nuts are healthy for you, they're expensive, so it's nice to have ways to stretch them out. So there is our two cups of rice. And we're gonna stick that in there. I will say one thing. If you use hot rice, it if it's super hot, like you just finished making, you take it hot out of the, the cooker and put it straight in, you can actually make it harder to blend because it thickens. Um, so I actually prefer cold rice. Uh, but you can use either one. Just be aware if it's thick, you may have to add a little extra water. Okay, so the next ingredient is water. And we have water here. Two and a half cups of water. you'll notice if well if you're looking at the recipe or you'll notice when you look at it that later on you're gonna be adding another two and a half cups of water so what I usually do is I go ahead and pour two cups of that since I have a two cup measuring cup here um, and if the blender needs more water to blend I know how much of it I'm using and how much still goes in the recipe and I don't have to try to guess hmm, how much water did I put in that blender um, so that I've got a something measured here so that's that's two cups. Somebody remind me, I'll need another, put another half cup in. There's a half cup if you want to use it. Yeah, but I'll probably spill it. <laughs> okay, so the next is um, cornstarch or arrowroot powder. Either one works beautifully. And we're gonna put in two tablespoons. That's gonna help uh, stretch out this gravy and thicken it. Use the same amount no matter which one you're using. And next is onion powder. Uh, we're going to put in one tablespoon of onion powder. And uh, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Well, that was more than a half teaspoon. Okay. And one and a half teaspoons of salt. I have salt, here it is. One thing I have found when you're using brown rice to stretch out cashews, uh, it actually takes a little bit more salt than plain cashews do because rice absorbs a lot of salt and flavor. So you pretty much, anytime you're using rice, you're gonna have to just count on adding a little extra flavor to give it the same taste. Um, Country style seasoning is the next thing. We're gonna put two teaspoons of that in there. And some lemon juice. One teaspoon of lemon juice. All right. 
here, Macy. Oh, yep, I'm blind. All right, never mind, it's here. We're good. Okay, so we're gonna blend this up, make some noise. You wanna blend it until it's very smooth. In fact, when you're working with rice, rice takes longer to blend than nuts do. Um, because of those little pieces, it's harder to get it smooth. So make sure that it's creamy before you stop blending. So we're gonna make noise now. recipes and it's one of the only miscellaneous recipes there so it should be easy to spot and if you live here in the area we sell it here at Christina's kitchen uh, by the ounce and uh, we also sell all the herbs that you use to make it with and uh, the nutrition center in Somerset also sells it um, theirs is sold without the salt we sell ours with the salt this year so right now it's an online cookbook so right now it's online and it's free what do you want no <laughs> you don't have to pay for it so we're going to turn on our stove here and we're going to put the gravy in it and then we're going to rinse out our blender with the remainder of our water which i said was two and a half cups of water right you need so half. that was two cups and we're going to do another half a cup. And I'm going to use it to rinse the blender out here so that we get every drop. And we're going to stir this gravy here so it doesn't burn. that 
last two and a half cups boiling water and uh, you won't have to stir the gravy as long. But um, I didn't think of that far enough in advance. I don't have any boiling water. And if you want mushroom gravy, which I was going to do that, wasn't I? Should I do mushroom gravy or should I do regular gravy? What do you guys say? Any responses? Should I do mushroom gravy or plain gravy? Give it a second. We'll wait for the responses to come yep. in on Facebook. One Facebook crowd. Mushrooms or no mushrooms? No mushrooms. All right, we got two votes for no mushrooms. Two votes for no mushrooms? Yeah. Any more votes? I'll give another minute if you guys want to holler. Any more votes coming in? No. No more votes coming in? No mushrooms. All right, no mushrooms it is. So if you want to add mushrooms, uh, what you'll oh, do... one person says mushrooms. We have one <laughs> against two. Come on, you guys. We need a few more people. Vote. <laughs> well, Michelle says, do you put mushroom gravy in the green bean casserole? Yes. Yes, you do mushroom gravy in the green bean casserole. So. But of course, if you don't like the mushrooms, you just leave them out. It's okay. <laughs> is that the only difference between the two recipes? or is it two No, no. Or mushrooms can go in either one. Okay. Yeah, they're both, they both can be mushroom gravy. Um, the white gravy becomes mushroom gravy when you add mushrooms. All right, you got, you got another mushroom. Bowl. Okay, we've got an equal tie now. We need somebody to be the tiebreaker. I'll break the tie, put mushrooms in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so usually I would do it before I poured it in the pot, but I forgot, so... Um, I'm just going to put some of this in and I'm going to let this keep cooking. And, uh, no, they're here. already out. I just... oh, we got two more votes for no mushrooms. Oh, no! Oh, we got another no mushroom vote. Yeah, no mushrooms. Okay, no mushrooms. Okay, no mushrooms. so if I was going to, you can watch me pretend because I'm not going to do it. Um, I would put, uh, a four ounce can of mushrooms into the blender and there I pretended to do it because you guys won't let me do it and uh, you asked for a vote I did it's wonderful I'm so happy to have participation <laughs> <laughs> so then I just turned it on low like this just let it jog a little bit and that just kind of grinds up the mushrooms into little chunks you don't want them to disappear you got one more vote for no mushrooms okay no mushrooms it is <laughs> All right, and then you just put it back in with the mushroom chunks. But of course, there is no mushrooms in this recipe. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You guys are so much fun. Michelle is sweating and laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what that emoji is. <laughs> laughing hard. Okay, so, John, you want to stir gravy for me so I can keep going? If it gets too high, I'll turn it down. All right, so that's the gravy. You're gonna stir this. Uh, make sure that, like, when you're stirring, I'm gonna take it from you for a second. When you're stirring, you wanna be like, paint a pitcher. Make sure you scrape the bottom all the way across the pot. Uh, that is going to keep the cornstarch or air root powder from sticking to the bottom and burning. And uh, you're gonna bring it to a boil, and we're gonna let it boil for one to two minutes, and then we'll take it off and we'll put it in something. I'm not sure what I'll put it in because I didn't pull anything out. Um, so that is, and then it's ready to serve. Or you can pour it into jars, let it seal in the fridge, and it's all ready to serve later. It does thicken up a lot, so um, don't be scared if it's like really thick the next day. Just warm it up and add a little more water until it's the consistency that you like. So that's the gravy. I'll show you what it looks like when it starts boiling over here. But I want to keep going. What time is it? Anyone have the time? It is 20, 20 minutes to 7. Yeah. Okay. We got to hurry if we're going to do this kale salad. So, for the kale salad, the first thing, of course, you need is kale, right? And I have the most beautiful kale right now from a local farmer. Um, it's organic. It's uh, um, what I would consider.
consider it's not baby kale, but as you can see, it's not huge. Uh, it has like medium sized leaves. So when you're using this kind of kale, you only need one pound of kale for this recipe. Um, and you won't have to break very many stems off. If you're using the super, super tough kale that you get from the store, you're gonna want two large bunches. And of course, you're gonna have a lot of stems to um, cut off. Um, I need one more of these bowls, Macy. You know what water in it? No, for the kale. So what I'm gonna do is we're just going to tear this kale into pieces and she's gonna bring me a bowl here in a second. Oh, you know what? I have the bowl, Macy. We're good. I'm just gonna put the water in the other bowl. Oh, and make a mess in the process. It's okay, it's just water. It's right, I'm not in it, it's just water. All right, there we go. Um, and you gave me a clean towel, wonderfully, so I can dry it out. Okay, now we have a bowl for kale salad. Okay, so we're gonna tear up these kale leaves into chunks. As you can see, I'm not tearing them into big pieces, just small pieces. Um, I just slide my hand along the stem and it just comes right off. And this may look like a gigantic salad. I mean, this is only one pound of kale leaves. <laughs> That's a lot of kale. Um, and the first time we made this last week, we were like, Mercy, how much kale salad are we making? But it shrinks. So it's really not gonna make that big of a salad. And it's incredible how much it shrinks. So we're gonna do our kale first. Daniel, tell us some benefits of kale. Why are we eating kale salad? <laughs> oh, right off the top of my head without Yeah, right again. off the top of your head. Since all of our phones are used to video, you have to go by I memory. Have, I have to go by memory. Well, I have given this talk before, but I don't remember all my notes. But one of the things that kale is good for, that I can, can tell you is good for, is it's full of vitamin K. And vitamin K is a, something that, thank you, Macy, uh, something that uh, helps your blood to clot properly. Um, and uh, it's actually very healthy to get healthy amounts of vitamin, vitamin K. I hold this down so I can talk. Yes, please do. <laughs> um, however, if you happen to be taking a blood thinner, uh, your doctor has prescribed that for uh, any kind of cardiovascular disease, um, chances are he's also told you, you or she, that we want to be sexist about the doctor, but he or she has also told you, be careful how many leafy greens that you get and eat. And what I always say is, Talk to your doctor, but it's always good to get some leafy greens. Uh, there's more vitamins in, in uh, kale than just your vitamin K, though. You've got vitamin C. you got actually quite a lot of vitamin A. You wouldn't think it because it's green, but uh, it's uh, it's really healthy for you and a lot of a lot of fiber as well. Thank so, you. There you Thank go. You. There's a few health benefits. All right. If you think of any more, you can tell me later. All right. Jonathan told me that our gravy is boiling, so if you guys want to look over at the gravy right now. You can see how nice and thick it's getting. Um, can you see it? You're a long ways away from it over there. <laughs> Make sure they can see the gravy. Someone says, do you make uh, kale chips with them? And if so, how? You can make kale chips in, with them, but I hate them, so I don't make them. Oh. Um, but my mom <laughs> loves them. You just take the kale and um, wash it and rub it a little bit, which I will show you how in just a minute. And um, I think you're good, John. So we're gonna shut you off. Um, and then put some seasonings on it and stick it in the dehydrator and dehydrate it. That's all you gotta do. All right, so our gravy is done. Do we have something to put it in, Macy? What do you wanna put it in? Um, that's a good question. Maybe, uh, maybe another bowl like the mashed potatoes. Actually, jars would be great, but maybe one jar in a small bowl. How's that? One jar in a bowl? Yeah. That way I can seal one and we can eat one. How's that? <laughs> All right, you're so good, thank John. Thank you for the instructions on the kale chips. And Michelle says folate as well. Oh, yes. And just think of all the calcium and the iron and the fiber. 
Um, there's so much that you can get in kale. Um, not to mention the fact that it's good. It's a good source of protein, um, and it also stabilizes your blood sugar. So um, there's a lot that kale will do for you. One of the things that I like to I like to think of, and this goes for not just kale, but all of these good things that we're cooking here, is the more of these things that you eat, the more that it, it fills you up with wholesome and good food, and the less you'll want to eat just the snack food or the stuff that we know isn't really the best for our bodies. Um, and and uh, one of the great things about kale is it, it does fill you up without giving you hardly any calories. I don't know what the calorie count is. <laughs> it's very kale, low. But <laughs> <laughs> the calories are what you put on it, not the kale itself. Right. Yes, it's a wonderful source of fiber and uh, keeps you feeling full for a long time. All right, so we're going to put um, some of this gravy in a jar. Thank you, John. You're amazing. You tell him to go away. My job is done. <laughs> okay, and the rest, um, I'll let you put in a bowl, Macy. How's that? This bowl, or do you want a small one? Whatever you think you want to use is fine with me. You'll probably need a spatula. You can just take it back there and put it in. So, could you um, even, Christina, could you even have a kitchen without mason jars? No! <laughs> <laughs> I could not have a kitchen without jars. Uh, the beauty of jars is that uh, you don't get any of that plastic uh, taste or chemicals in your food. Uh, your food seals nicely and stays, uh, keeps much better in the refrigerator. We'll put it over here with our final product. You should, you should see Christina's kitchen back I mean, her <laughs> refrigerator back in the kitchen. <laughs> That's it's full of jars. Full of jars. <laughs> we put our salad dressing in a jar. We put our soup in jars. We put our gravy in jars. Um, what else do we put in jars, Lexi? Just about everything. We fillings, put... burrito fillings. Oh, yeah. Burrito our black bean burrito filling, that goes in jars. Jackfruit fillings. Yeah, pretty much any of our sandwich fillings go in jars. Um, we pretty much function cheese. on jars. Oh yeah, our cheese sauce goes rice. in a jar. Cooked rice, yeah, you saw that too. Um, yeah, the, our whole fridge is full of jars. And the nice thing is that they're easy to label. You always know what's in it because you can see right through it. Um, it's not hiding. And uh, we just put a piece of masking tape on it with the date on it so we know when it was made. And uh, we like to write on it when it was open. So we know what's going on, and uh, it just works wonders. Of course, the downside is you do break a few every now and then uh, when one falls out of the refrigerator or, or uh, one <laughs> or, drops on or, the floor. Or like the other day, you find the three-week-old jar of... Well, that's just nasty. <laughs> that's why we put a date on it. <laughs> we threw it away if the date is too old. <laughs> So now, unfortunately, you've, you've told your secret to all of the people who are watching, and uh, you won't get nearly as many people returning their jars after they buy soup in a jar. Or <laughs> yeah, but if you buy something from us and you're not going to use that jar, be sure and return it because we can sterilize them and totally reuse them again. So, yes, please. Um, you can bring that gravy out the bowl, Macy, and put it next to the mashed potatoes. Okay, I've just about finished this uh, kale salad here. Just got a few more pieces of kale left. The tedious part is getting the stems off. And if you use a big fat kale, it's actually easier because you have less stems to pull off. Hey, Lexi, do you want to help me with this? That way we can finish these leaves up really fast. Yes, um, to dump that water into. You can put it on this side. How long does the gravy keep? The gravy, if it's sealed nicely, like what I just did, where it's boiling hot, put into the jar, and then um, uh, put basically straight in the fridge as soon as it cools for a little bit, so you can put it in the fridge, uh, it will keep for at least one to two weeks. Um, if the button pops up, then throw it away. But I should say, if the button pops up, well, it's in the fridge. If it pops up when you open it, that's what you want. It was sealed. <laughs> so.
So the next project with this kale, once you have torn up the leaves, the size you want for your salad, is you have to massage it. Now this is something I just learned about, um, and it's something that made all of us laugh when we realized we had to do it for this recipe because, you know, when you think of a massage, you think of like going to a massage therapist, right? And giving like a relaxing shoulder massage. But to think of massaging kale, <laughs> that kind of sounds a little weird, um, unless you've done it before. But uh, that is what we are going to do for the salad. You see, raw kale has a very strong flavor. And uh, of course, the older the kale is, the harder it is to digest. And so to help make it easier to digest, easier to chew, and actually bring out some of the sugars in the kale, you massage it. And I'm gonna leave the last few pieces for you to do, Lexi, and I'm gonna start massaging this kale. The, I gotta find a spot to do it. Maybe I'll do it on the side of the table. So to massage kale, you basically just like what it sounds like, you massage it like you're kneading bread dough. Um, you're just going to take it and start crunching it up. And you know, kale is a little more tough than lettuce. It holds up a little bit more to uh, this kind of kneading process. And you'll notice as I'm doing this, uh, you will start seeing the kale will start changing color and it will also start shrinking. And it'll start getting moist looking the more we do this. And then we'll say, where did that one pound of kale go? It disappeared. <coughs> but as you're doing this, this massaging process is actually uh, breaking down the cell wall of the kale, making it easier to digest and bringing out the sugars in the kale so that it tastes better. Um, so it's helping you all the way around. Macy, have you ever given kale a massage before? Nope. <laughs> That's all right, neither had I until last week. <laughs> they say to do it for about three to five minutes, but you'll know when to stop because you can tell it just starts looking nice and limp uh, and uh, just something that uh, would be a whole lot easier to eat than these uh, crispy leaves that you have to gnaw on. You can just go ahead and take that pink bowl and all the stems. Oh, that's a tough leaf. I'm going to use it. You see how it's shrinking? And this, remember, this was a full pound of kale. I mean, that big pink bowl was completely full, and now this little white bowl is like less than half full. So this is a kale massage. And you know what else it does? It gives your hands some strength too. <laughs> Develops the muscles in your hands. <laughs> then when she comes to give me a massage, I go, ow. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> But you know, the, the byproduct of this is that you get really strong hands for playing the piano. That is if you can play the piano. Or any instrument. Or a hammer. Or yeah. Knife. Using a knife yeah. in the kitchen. Opening a jar. Christina can play the piano exceptionally well, by the way. I think he's biased. Not biased at all. Subjective <laughs> opinion. <laughs> I am glad that he's letting me play the piano on his sermons in the wood piano, though. Should have started that a long time ago. If you haven't seen one of Daniel's sermons in the woods, you should you should definitely watch. He's got some amazing nature footage here in Macquarie County. Um, just uh, incredible sights and incredible uh, lessons in his sermons at the same time. And drone footage too now. All right, what do you think? You see how moist and uh, soft those leaves look now? Just look at that, just totally different color, different, they're nice and moist now. 
Um, they're soft, like when I squish them in my fingers, they're not tough anymore. Um, and of course, the tougher your kale, the longer you'll have to do that. But this is pretty well done right here. Um, just totally different, different texture than when we started with. Like before it was crispy, felt like popcorn when I first started crunching it, and now it just feels soft. And that's how you know that you've massaged your kale enough. break it open and then uh, carefully let the seeds come out. I just gently help the seeds out off of the rind and those little pomegranate seeds is the part you're going to eat. The nice thing is the rind floats. You see that? So it makes it really easy to take off. Uh, if you don't do it underwater these seeds will squirt you like everything and you will be wearing pomegranate juice. But underwater they behave beautifully. They come off really nicely. So I always like to do it underwater. I remember the first time I had a pomegranate. We didn't know how to do it this way, so we took the pomegranate and we cut it in sections like an orange and I bit into it. And I was like, ooh, this is nasty. <laughs> then when we discovered this, I discovered I actually liked pomegranates. What do you know? They taste good. It's because that rind tastes awful. Right, John? Yep. <laughs> John had to try the rind just to see what it tastes like. He doesn't recommend it. Some people learn the hard way. <laughs> when Daniel and I first got married, uh, I started buying all these weird and strange things and bringing them home, and he'd be like, what'd you bring home this time? But... Uh, yep. Over the years, he's learned to trust me, and uh, now he's with, not weirded out by all my craziness. With most things. <laughs> with most things. <laughs> Except Brussels sprouts for breakfast. <laughs> Daniel likes his fruit for breakfast. He's not a savory breakfast person, so. I like savory breakfast. We just form a truce, and I don't make them very often for him. All right, we've done half our pomegranate. You guys are awfully quiet. Facebook, Facebook crowd, send me some comments. Tell me what's going on. What do you think? Any questions on what we've covered so far? We've covered a lot. Woo! I just sent one flying out of the bowl.
So, why on earth should we even eat pomegranates? Pomegranates are extremely high in antioxidants, uh, also in vitamin C. Um, but of course, with uh, being high in antioxidants, they are one of the wonderful cancer-fighting um, and uh, immune system boosting uh, healthy components that you want to include in your diet. The main thing is pomegranates aren't around all year. They're only around this time of year. They're actually in season right now, which I think is so perfect because, you know, with Christmas, like we're always looking for red things to add to our food to make it look more like Christmas and pomegranates just add that perfect touch. They have, they're not super sweet. They're more like a, I don't know, almost like a sweet tart flavor. Uh, they've got lots of fiber inside those seeds um, to help clean out your colon and, and uh, help you feel full and um, fill you up and uh, just absolutely healthy for you. So while they're in season, I actually found these at Aldi's last week for 99 cents a piece, which was a steal. Yeah. Um, so if you see them on sale, don't be afraid to buy them now. You know how to fix them. Now look what you got me into. I say my, she said, before his glory says, my kid says, you'll have to try the right now. <laughs> <laughs> you will never try it again, I promise. It only takes once. It doesn't taste as good as an orange peel. Do you need me to hold your strainer? I'm going to put it above that dishpan there. Pour it in. So now, see how nicely the rind floats to the top? And we're just going to pick off those pieces. And then I just take this to the sink, which our sink is right here. We have a portable sink. Um, and we're just going to, I'm going to pour off a little bit first before I pour it through the strainer to get rid of some of that white stuff. We're just going to pour that white stuff off. All right, now I'm ready for the strainer. And we're just going to pour the seeds into the strainer. And there you have it. And you can just set it here to drain. We've got our pomegranate seeds. They're so cute, so little. It's so good for you. I uh, highly recommend trying them. I hope you go home and try some. Okay. Oh, they're already home because they're watching it. That's true. You don't even have to go home. You're at home. You got to go to the store and buy some first. <laughs> All right. Macy, I'm going to hand this to you or John or somebody. Um, if you could dump off the trash off of this and then bring it back because I'm going to need it. So let me look at my uh, kale salad recipe. We have the kale and we have the pomegranates. We need uh, some chopped nuts. I'm gonna bring this back here. We're gonna put the pomegranate seeds right here on the kale. Doesn't that look pretty already? I mean, you guys look at that. Mm, that's like Christmas gorgeous. Already. Green and red, that's your Christmas. Oh, I love it. I'm ready to dive in right now. I'm done the undressing on it yet. Uh, okay, what else are we with? Nuts, chopped nuts. I have nuts somewhere. You can use any kind of chopped nuts that you want or seeds. You can put sunflower seeds on there. Some people like to put hemp seed or flax seed or whatever, whatever kind of crunch you want. I'm using toasted pecans. You can also use toasted walnuts. You can use slivered almonds. I mean, the sky's the limit as to what kind of crunch you can put on this salad, okay? But I'm just gonna use pecans today. We're just gonna put one cup of chopped nuts
Well, I got a little extra. Oh, well. So sad. <laughs> All right. And then we have uh, dried cranberries. I think they are still in the fridge. Uh, we're going to put in a half a cup of dried cranberries. And if you don't have the pomegranate seeds, just do one cup of dried cranberries instead. So we're going to put that in as soon as Macy brings those out to us. And then I'm going to work on making the dressing. So for the salad dressing, I'm going to move this out of our way. Thank you. Are you done with this? Yes. And this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we need a half a cup of dried cranberries. There we go. These are organic dried cranberries that we got at Costco. You can use any kind of dried cranberry that you want to use. Okay, so that's that. We're ready to do dressing now. So for dressing, we need uh, an orange and a lemon, okay? And we are going to zest it and then juice it. So for zesting it, um, I'm so glad we have another bowl here. We're going to zest this orange that's going to give some extra flavor in here. Michelle says, I beat my pomegranate to remove the seeds. Have you tried it? It's fun and fast. Yes, I have tried it, and it works most of the time. Um, sometimes pomegranates can be uh, stubborn and they don't always do it. But yes, I've tried that method too. Um, I generally end up giving myself a shower when I try though. But yes, that is another way you can do it. You can beat the pomegranate and get the seeds out. If you're not like me. And end up wearing it. Alright. We've got our orange zest now. And now we're just going to juice it. The rest of it. Depending on how juicy your orange is will depend on how much juice you get out of it. So you'll have to adjust just your recipe to taste on the dressing. All right. She said she beats them in a huge bowl. Yeah, that would be helpful. <laughs> so you don't get sprayed. All right, and then we're gonna do some some lemon. Depending on how ju juicy your lemon is, we'll decide whether you want to do a whole lemon or a half a lemon. This one's fairly juicy, so I'm not going to do the whole thing. And let's see, what else goes in here? We need, um, we're going to put just a little bit of olive oil in. You can leave the olive oil out if you're wanting in an oil-free dressing. Olive oil is optional. Um, we're just going to put a couple tablespoons in here. That was supposed to be four tablespoons. That was three. All right. And let's see. Two garlic cloves. We're going to mince those. the salad on the dressing. That way it can marinate with that lemon juice. That will help uh, make it so the garlic is not so strong. And let's see, what else can we put in here? We're going to put a little bit of maple syrup. And this, of course, you can also adjust to taste depending on how sweet uh, your orange is. But I'm going to do three tablespoons. And 
We need some seasoning. All your seasonings you can do to taste. Uh, so don't uh, feel like you have to put an exact amount in. If you want to just sprinkle some salt in, you can. Um, I'm just going to put in three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and put in a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Whoops, I forgot where I was putting it. I'm going to put it on the kale. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Are right, you guys you have to talk to me? I'm getting nervous. <laughs> oh, I was putting some paprika. Um, Michelle says the kale salad is looking so delicious already. Oh, good. Clara, Thank you. Clara says, do you wash your oranges with something to get the waxy film off before you? Dust? Yes. Yes. We washed and we pre-washed them before the class, um, but we washed them in vinegar, uh, vinegar water. Uh, you just put, you can either put vinegar and water in a spray ball and spray it on and let it sit for a little bit. Um, or you can, if you're doing a lot of them, you can put all your fruit in the dish pan, fill with water, put some vinegar and let it soak for one to two minutes um, or up to five minutes. And that will take that wax and coating and all that stuff off of it um, so that you can zest. Um, also, I like to, when I can, I like to use organic if I'm going to zest um, because that helps as well. But um, vinegar works like a charm to get that um, wax off. Thank you for asking that. Maybe I'll be less nervous now. Let's see, what goes in here now? We got onion powder. Have I put onion powder in yet? I don't think so. You can put any of your favorite seasonings in here. Um, I like sage and turmeric. Sage and turmeric. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel's trying to make me not like my salad. <laughs> <laughs> onion powder, garlic powder, salt, paprika. I think we got everything in here now. So we're going to just stir this up. This is our dressing. And then you can just put as little or as much of this dressing on your salad as you would like. And then here, let's see what it taste like. it. Let's stir it so we can see what it looks like. Isn't that pretty? The paprika and the orange juice give it that nice reddish um, color. All right, so now we're just going to put some of this on the salad. Probably going to end up using it all of it. So there, I just put it all on. There you go. And I gotta get over here so I can actually stir because I can't reach the bowl. Oh no, we missed an ingredient. We can't do that. We missed the orange zest. We gotta get that in there. And I'm missing some ginger. I'm gonna put a little bit of ginger in here. That's going to add something too. So ginger and hey, we can throw in some green onions too if you like green onions. But ginger, I'm gonna take this and I think I got rid of all my knives except my butcher knife. Nope, I got a little knife here. This is just a piece of fresh ginger. You don't need very much, like a half a teaspoon of a ginger. So I just peel the skin off of it, and then I just take it and use my same zester to grate the ginger. Oh wow, that smells good. I can smell it already. My son was sold when you put the maple syrup in. Ah! <laughs> That's great. All right. I only need a half a teaspoon. I think that's going to be about exactly right. Judging by the amount on there. Yes. Megan Dodds wants to know how long you can keep the dressing in your refrigerator. Um, you can keep it up for a week. And the nice thing about this kale salad is you can make the kale salad and keep it for a week with the dressing on, as long as you have an airtight container. Um, so you do not have to like make it and serve it immediately. You can make it and eat on it all week long. Um, which I love salads like that. We're just going to put a little bit of green onion in there. That's a totally optional ingredient too. Will this recipe added, be added to your recipe site? Yes, it will, but I don't know when. I'll try soon, but I can't promise anything. Depends on how many bakery orders I get next week. It might be after Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be too late for Christmas. On Monday? We made 300 muffins and 50 cookies in one afternoon. 
is a big bit artist, but I promise I will try to get it on before Christmas so you guys can make this for Christmas. Otherwise, you're just going to have to rewatch this and take notes and you can still make it for Christmas. And if someone wants to go and watch it and take notes and put them in the comments, then well, everybody else can better. use it for Christmas. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, I promise I will try to get it on our website. I really will. Okay. Did I get everything else I forgot that I wanted to put in here? I think so. All right. So we're going to mix this up now. That looks so pretty. And the more you stir it, the more it shrinks. Lexi, do you care to give me that um, plastic airtight container that we put in last time? Emma Tucker says you can bring me some kale salad Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jean, I'll bring you some. Yes. Do you need a plate to put it all on? I'm going to put it in that container Lexi's bringing to me. No, I mean, like oh, yes, I do it. need a plate to put all this on. we got to serve the meal. I mean, that's the highlight of making all this, right? Is to have a nice plate at the end of the day. Look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? The salad, the colors. Where do you rewatch this video? On the Christina's Kitchen Facebook page. Just look for Christina's Kitchen on Facebook. Yeah, as soon right as this Facebook video stops being live, um, it, give it a few minutes and it will reappear as a video that you can watch and I will not delete it. So it'll be there. You may have to scroll past, you know, my recent Facebook post, but you can find it. And also, if you go to our YouTube channel, which you can find the link to our YouTube channel from our website, christinaskitchen.org, um, hopefully within a week or so, Daniel will upload this uh, Facebook video, or I should say this video, to YouTube as well. So you can send the YouTube link to your friends. We're just going to take this salad, and we're going to put it here in this little container. And can you believe how much that kale shrunk? That gigantic bowl of kale made this little bitty salad. It's and, still a big salad. And by tomorrow morning, it'll have shrunk more. Yep. Um, because it shrinks as it sits and that marinates in that dressing. And I think it tastes better the second day than it does the first day. So don't be afraid to make it in advance and let it marinate in the fridge and then eat it the next day. Um, because that just, oh, all that flavor soaks into those kale leaves, and it tastes so good. So, Merry Christmas. There's your Christmas salad, all made. Okay, so I'm ready to wipe my fingers off. Let me just wash my hands off real quick, and we're going to make a plate and let you see what we made for dinner. Macy, we're going to need a couple serving spoons. So we've got mashed potatoes, we've got uh, green, 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 green bean casserole, where's the green? Mix the mashed potatoes in the bowl. Oh, it's got a lid on it. It's got a lid. You gotta oh. take the lid off. There's the gravy. <laughs> All right. Mashed potatoes green and gravy, two more. green bean casserole, kale salad over here. Now I want you to see how thick this gravy is already. This has been sitting. You can see how thick it is there. Um, the other one can't see it. I'm gonna grab the other one too. Thank you, John. Here's our gravy. It's all thick. Um, it gets thicker as it cools, so don't be afraid to add some water to it if you'd like. And here's our mashed potatoes here. And uh, we're gonna need a bigger spoon for the green bean salad. Like, let me see. The green bean salad, green bean casserole. Sorry, I can't talk. All right, and here's our kale salad to add to the mix. And uh, we're ready to make a plate. So we'll start with the salad. You always start with the salad and then you know you have room for it on your plate. Otherwise you end up piling everything on your plate except salad and you don't know where to put your salad anymore. Macy's in a quandary here. Thank you so much, Macy. You're amazing. All right, how's that for a salad? And then we'll put some mashed potatoes here on this plate. All right, I heard a pop. That was the gravy ceiling. 
<laughs> All right, we're gonna make a hole so we can put some gravy in the middle here. All right, and then let's see what happens with this green bean salad experiment. Green bean salad? Casserole, casserole. I'm tired. It's casserole. It's not salad. You You're still thinking about it. I do have a recipe for green bean salad, and I make it all summer here at the restaurant. Look at that. Does that look good or what? Mm -hmm. It does. That looks amazing. <laughs> all right, you guys. I wish you were all here so you could dig in. But uh, we'll I hope you enjoy our you. Christmas dinner. <laughs> so, well, thanks so much for joining us. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Thanks so much for your comments. It means a lot to me to know that you are um, joining us. And uh, Daniel, would you like to have a word of prayer to close this out? Sure. And I guess you can bless the food too that we're all going to eat and they're going to wish. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, I've had a lot of fun with this class, as you can tell. So, uh, and thanks for making a plate of food for me. <laughs> uh, but let's let's have a word of prayer together. Father in heaven, thank you for this uh, this great day that we've had, this time that we could do this online class and, and for the food that you have provided. I pray that you will bless each one who is watching and those who may be listening later, that you will bless them in their in their homes as they cook and prepare for the holidays. And pray that you will bless the food and bless the hands that have prepared it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Merry Christmas, you guys. We love you. And be sure and tune again the third Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m. right here on Christina's Kitchen Facebook page. Um, I have no idea what we'll be making in January, but I can guarantee you it will be good. Have a great night. Merry God Christmas. bless you. Merry Christmas. <clears throat>